TNTM The Show presents Talking Nerdy, June edition, with your hosts Pablo Gunner, Marvin Goof, The Ambassador, and we are here to talk nerdy to you about Sweet Tooth Season 3? Let's move on to uh, Sweet Tooth. Season three. I I've seen the first season. I and but I didn't get to the second or third. But fill us in. Oh, Sweet Tooth is uh, really good. Uh, so basically, they may have found a way to cure the virus. But the whole time they're going there, they keep trying to like ask us, like, what do you really want out of this? Because uh, when it comes down to it, thinking everything's going to be okay is going to be hard because if you is potentially if you cure the virus you'll get rid of hybrids hybrids mm. and cuz uh, basically in this world a pa pandemic virus happened that where it basically like almost destroyed the world oh, and geez. there's okay. very little survivors but then to make it worse humanity can't reproduce anymore oh that's great so when they have kids they're half animal Mm, okay. So, so the main character is half human, half deer. That's cute. Yeah. <laughs> so he's like a guy with he's like a human, but then he has antlers and like a deer ear. Mm. And uh, he's the main character, Gus. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, this kid. Yeah, yeah it is he, really cute. He, like, especially <laughs> first. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because like it. It's a lot like prettier than the comic book it's based off of. Huh. Right. The and comic book was basically one of those series where the guy's a really good writer, but he is an artist, but would you call him the best artist? Not 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 really, but it gets the job done and he in its own way it is like talented and nice, but it's not it, it is jarring art it's very, ugly it's it's ugly very, art but yeah. it fits the world because the world is ugly and so that's that's the only times that i've really seen jeff lemire's art is when he's going my ugly art fits with this ugly story mm. and and it works and that's for me like it's hard to watch the show because i go this show's too real and too pretty especially with the pandemic stuff like i was like kind of turned off by that because i was like this is too real, you know. But it's, uh, but yeah, but it is it's kind of fantasy too. Yeah, it is, it is. It it definitely focuses on the fantasy side of things as well. Okay. But it also like asks like difficult questions. If you're in a place and you know that if you survive, you're gonna potentially kill off the rest of humanity. What do you do? Mm. Questions like that. Mm -hmm are asked a lot in this show and then of course some people are trying to race for a cure some of the cures that have been found are just not going to be that promising mm -hmm. because uh then it turns out turns out to be like is the cure worth it if i decide to go genocide on another group of people to create the cure is that cure actually worth making mm -hmm. Yeah. Especially if it kills everyone, right? Like, if you go, w if it doesn't fix the problem, then you just killed anybody that can reproduce or continue mm -hmm. any kind of life or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's pretty crazy. Yeah, uh, and it's pretty cool. They they do some connections with, with the characters more. One of the minor characters in the second season, it hinted towards the end that she was probably going to carry on what the previous villain was trying to do and so she does end up carrying it on and you see like how brutal some people can be like even some people are just bad enough where they want to get their goal done but they don't care at what cost mm -hmm. they don't care if they, they don't care if they have to use the uh, hybrids to get the job done it, it's really it's really dark and messed up and it's nice the way they have it all like come back and I guess from the beginning the plot twist at the end was was already planned mm -hmm. and so they were able to keep it accurate so when you go see it you're like wait a minute how can this be 
something but, for me to look forward to then, I think. I, I, I think it's it a, yet, so. I think it's a must watch. And if you like Robert Downey Jr., he produced this. Oh, yeah. wow. With his life. Okay. Wow, I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, I, I mean, I love the books. They're they're brilliant and phenomenal. But I mean, it's it kind of tough. Like I said, the pandemic thing, and then w and then when you involve kids, like oh, it's 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 it messes with my heart. You know, it's like you kind of only have like so much in, in the tank when you have kids too, right? Like that mm -hmm. emotional uh, stuff, and and so you're like you kind of just want maybe mindless stuff like other things. You know, where you don't have to think too much. Right. <laughs> so, um, which is yeah. So, but yeah, it's off off to check it out for sure. Uh, the wife and I enjoyed the the first season, so nice. we'll see if we can get check it out. Let's talk about our merch. Let's talk about our merch. I'm sporting uh, our Star Wars stuff, the Star Wars Talk Nerdy to Me, just plain. And then I got the shorts, Talk Nerdy to Me. You can get that on our website. It's on sale with free shipping. Probably going to continue to be because of the fact that Acolyte is continuing into the next month. A lot of this stuff is like prototype stuff, so it's upgraded. There's better versions on our actual website. And hey. If there's anything that you want customized to you or you there anything you have any idea, just send it to us and we'll do our best to do that and see what we can get away with. Because there's some stuff we can, some stuff we can't. <laughs> you know, we yeah, push the yeah. boundaries as much as we can. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I got my uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Top Nerdy to Me shirt. Sure. Pretty awesome. I got the Halo one. The good Halo. Ooh, yeah. Yes. I like it. So, yeah. Uh, and if you want any of this stuff, just... Request it. If it's not on the website, just hit us up and, and we'll make it available to you and, and hook you up. Cool? So for shoutouts, we really don't have much uh, it's because, um, well, I mean, all, MK Jekyll and Hyde is now at the top of that list because they're phenomenal. They reached 250 subs on their for their comics, for their online comics, and, and they're really cool and really awesome, and they do great stuff. I know they're a, a parent as well. And so it's, it's great conversing with them and just all their posts are great. The Pesky Gremlins, they have a new website and they have like new comics, web comics out too that look fun and enjoyable. And, and they always help out with their stuff. Eric Lopez, that guy's always a G, like he's the best on, on Twitter mm -hmm. and retweeting our stuff as well as the podcast that never dies or what, what is it? The podcast that wouldn't die? The podcast that wouldn't yeah, die. Yeah, the podcast yes. that wouldn't die. They're always awesome too. Check them all out. I believe that's it for us, right? Yeah, just make sure to like and subscribe. Talk nerdy to me. Stay nerdy, planet Earth. Keep it nerdy, y'all.